You know, friends, trust. Today, people are not able to trust anybody. They are not able to trust the future. They are not able to trust the scriptures. They are not able to trust their pastors. As Duncan Campbell once said, either privately to me or in a meeting, uh, peep, the pastor's wife was overheard by the others who were seated around her when she said, Oh, John is forgetting that I am listening. Why? Actually, a wife should be able to support and strengthen the message of the pastor or anybody. But trust is gone. You see? And so, if you turn to chapter 40, the book of Psalms, this is what you will read. Psalm 40. Second verse on, please. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock, and established my goings. They were not irrelevant meandering goings. You know, there is something resolute and in the goings there was direction. Why and how? He has put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. Blessed is that man that maketh the Lord his trust, and respecteth not the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. You know, folks, after the war, certain reparations were given out to people who had suffered losses. And uh, when I started preaching on the continent, and I would see how people had suffered, oh, it was very hard to take. Empty shells of fabulous buildings. And you know, when presenting their uh, requisition of reparations, or application for reparation. They gave inflated figures, farmers and others. One lady said to me, while my city was bombed and the glasses were broken, I went in too and looted Oh, my. 
And this dear old lady, she said, I said to her, you need to make reparation, a restoration, a restitution. You need to return and confess these things. So many people began to make such restorations. Just imagine if all the tax cheats in the country returned to the exchequer the money that they owed in back taxes. And now, Brother Olu was speaking about poll tax and how he had not paid his poll tax. And he went in and made restitution. Now, actually, Christians ought to be known. And the country can't run without Christ. Please, let this be clear. Without Christ, you have chaos. Chaos in individual lives and in national lives. Without Christ. See, we are stepping into the unknown. And what a comfort to know that our God cares even for the sparrow. What a comfort. Blessed is the man that maketh the Lord his trust. How amazing. You know, we trust in uh, the words of people, you know, I have one great weakness, and that weakness is uh, I am moved by the sight of misery. And, uh, well, you might call it a great blessing, but Sometimes, when I have tried to help and lift people, I found that they were not only ungrateful, not that I want thanks. I can't even remember the names of those people whose debts I discharged. But, you know, there was no transformation of character. That grieves me. I had a letter or a phone call followed by letters from Paris saying, well, here is something which requires your attention. And what did this letter say? My husband and I gathered some money. My husband is dead. And now I am terminally ill. But my husband said, this money should be given not just to the big missions where overheads, you know, take up all the offering, but we decided that you should have that is, the fellowship should have this money which my husband and I have saved. 
You know, I don't ask for money. I don't talk or have trust in money. And so I just put that letter aside. But then further communications turned up. saying, oh my, I'm in distress and I don't know how long I have to live. You know, my dear friends, I have learned to take things to the Lord. But sometimes, you know, we think we are kinder than God and more loving than God, which is sheer foolishness, absolute foolishness. However, after several months, you know, I said, all right, if you are in such grave distress, we will relieve you. And so, come over to Amsterdam and receive this. You will relieve us then. Now, in all my life, I never did something which I was doing when I went to Amsterdam. And there was this bunch of people and they were discharging their duty to this person who was dying or whatever. But nothing came out of it but an empty promise which was a deceiver's device. Now, to fall for such a thing? I have never been covetous. I never look at somebody who is prospering and say, hey, you know, I don't have this, I don't have that. No, I have no time for things. I am too busy seeking eternal souls. Now, how and why did I err? It was not greed. There were immense needs in the fellowship at that time, and we appeal to no man. And we don't have rich donors. I don't have rich friends. My friend, my savior and supplier is Jesus. And you know, my dear friends, there are many false trusts today. And we fall a prey to these wrong kind of trust. Some trust in chariots and trust not in princes, says the Bible. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. Yeah, I learned my lesson. Life teaches many lessons. And I feel I ought to be learning much more rapidly than all the people that I address. 
once when I addressed any meeting, I would be one of the youngest there. But today, things are different. I am the oldest very often. But wisdom has been coming in very small drips and droplets into me. The wisdom that cometh from above is pure, says God's word. Now, my friends, the fourth verse says, Blessed is that man that maketh the Lord his trust. All right, whom are we going to believe then? Shall we believe the government? Oh, no. I don't believe governments. I won't take their handouts. As a matter of fact, oh, I'm very careful not to accept any kind of relief or or provision which is made legally and lawfully to be given out to people who are doing the kind of service that we are doing. I say, oh, tomorrow the government is going to come down on us and say, hey, you are propagating the gospel to Muslims and Buddhists and Hindus and all else. We meant this relief funds to be employed just for giving them physical relief. Now, I don't believe in physical relief, though we send out doctors, dentists, and nurses to various needy spots. And uh, spirit, soul, body, that's the order. How many people want good health? And you know, there, there is the danger of medicating yourself until you're dead. Some of the medicines of today are so lethal and so dangerous, but they are prescribed and people say, after all, I have such a short span or prognosis, and I don't know that I'm going to live very long, and I will keep on steadily taking these tablets. Well, my dear friends, I don't deny that medical help can be a great blessing. But as I told one of my cardiologists, uh, you know, I'm one of the longest surviving patients of the heart clinic in Cleveland. They treat me with great respect. And my cardiologist asked me, would you pray for me? Right here. And I did. So, I have a very great 
believe that God uses medical people. But he is the Lord of lords and King of kings. My life is in his hands. Your breath is in his hands. And don't you trust him? And you will trust the government, you will trust cardiologists who say there is nothing more that we can do for you. Blessed is the man who maketh the Lord his trust. Now let us turn to Psalm 71 and the fifth verse. For you are my hope, O Lord God, and you are my trust from my youth. You know, my friends, this trust must be cultivated from your youth. Walking with God should come early to you. If you have missed it, oh, try and retrieve all that you can. There is only one place where spilt milk can be recovered. I will restore unto you the years that the canker worm, the palmer worm, and the locusts have eaten. What a wonderful Savior. My dear friends, that Britain today is bending over backwards to please people who have as their agenda, and they make no secret of it. We will convert Britain into a Muslim nation. Allah has no son, is their contention. I say it's true. Allah, who is the God of the wild deserts, he may not have a son. He has no son. And if he had a son, there might be greater damage to the nations. But the Son of God brought love into this dismal scene. What a dismal scene! You know, people frantically trying to find refuge and uh, fleeing this country and that country. Refugees, refugees everywhere. But where can we go for real refuge? Here the Bible says, For you are my hope, O Lord God. You are my trust from my youth. Let us pray. Lord, what kind of dedication do we bring to this race? 
Lord, we plead with you. Teach us to trust in your word and obey your word and receive that blessedness which belongs to those whose hope the Lord is. We ask in Jesus' holy name. Amen.